food in the kitchen. Waiting for your orders, sir. And that kitchen will be yours again, is he? Send him here at once. Yes, sir. At once, sir. What's the problem? Knows one of the officer, isn't he? No, he's just a common soldier. He's been having a love affair with one of those servant girls. He's a damn nuisance, that fellow. Did you say his name was Lord? Wasn't he the man who called that trouble that bling? Ah, so you remember that, do you? Now, look here. Will you give me a bit of talking to? You might have some effect on him. I've already shouted at him and thrashed him, but he didn't make any difference. He can't keep his hands off those girls. So you want me to fill his brain with Christian ideas to you? What kind of an impression do you think God word will make on a common soldier, especially one like that? Um, not sure. But it's worth trying anyway. Come in! What kind of trouble have you been causing in the kitchen, no? Not in the kitchen, sir. Well, no. wherever it was, tell me all about it. Uh, but I can't talk about it in front of this just gentleman. Don't worry uh, about me, my lad. You see, sir, something like this. We were all at the dance uh, down at Gabriel's saloon, and then well, then. Uh, Ludwig said... What? Uh, Ludwig got to do with it. Keep to the point. Well, then, uh, Emma said to me, let's go down to the cellar. I see. I suppose it was Emma who led you into this uh, trouble. Uh, well, something like that. I mean, if the girl isn't willing in the first place, nothing happens, darling. Now, tell me clearly. Are you the father of that girl's child or not? How are we to know, sir? What do you mean? Don't you know, then? No. You see, sir, that's what we can never be sure of. You mean you weren't the only man uh, who... That night, I was the only man. <laughs> but I tell you, you can't tell if you've been the only one, and not with a girl like Emma. Are you trying to put the blame on Ludwig? Uh, Is that the idea? Uh, it's not easy to know who to put the blame on. Sir. Now, tell me uh, clearly. You told him how you would marry her. Oh, well, he always has to say that. <sighs> this is a disgusting business. It's the old story. Come on now, Lord. Surely you are man enough to know if you were the father or not. You see, sir, I, uh, it's true that I did go with her. <laughs> but, uh, you know very well yourself, sir, that it doesn't lead to anything. Look here, my lad. It's you we are talking about. You can't abandon that girl when the child is born. You can't be forced to marry her. Uh, but you have to help support the child. Uh, that so you must do. So much lose me then. Hey, if that's how it is, if you can't agree who's the father, then this case will have to be taken to the law court. I can't settle it, and it really got nothing to do with me anyway. Dismiss! Uh, just a moment, Lord. Oh. Uh. 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 Don't you think it's a nasty trick to abandon a girl like that? To abandon a girl and baby to poverty? Uh, don't you think so, eh? It would be a very unkind thing for me to do if I knew I was the father. But I tell you, uh, you can never be sure of that. And it wouldn't be much fun having to train all your life to in earn enough money to support another man's kid. You and the captain must agree with me. Uh, that sir. will do, no. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And keep out of the kitchen, you scoundrel! <laughs> Why didn't you scold him more severely? What do you mean, didn't I do just that? No, you just sat there muttering to yourself. As a matter of fact, I hardly knew what to say to him. It's a serious matter for the girl, of course, but it's difficult for him, too. Supposing he's not the father of a child. 
The girl can take her baby to the orphanage and everything will be forgotten. But if the boy is involved in a law case, his army courier will be ruined. Ah, I'd like to be the judge in this case. Maybe that boy Nord is responsible for this trouble. But that's what we can't find out. But one, one thing we can say is that the girl is responsible. Well, I never pass judgment in cases like this. Well, now, what did you want to talk about? Oh, yes, about your daughter, brother, and her confirmation was a... It's not just a matter of confirmation in the Christian faith, but about her whole future. This house is full of women, all trying to influence this daughter of mine. My mother-in-law wants Bertha to become a spiritualist. Laura wants her to be an artist. And old Margaret Nurse wants her to be a Baptist. And the serving women want her to join the Salvation Army. Meanwhile, all these women oppose me. She's my daughter too. I'm going to send her away from home. You've got too many women loving this house. You're absolutely right. It's like living in a cage of tigers. They'll soon tear me to pieces. Well, we all have our hardship to bear. I have more than my share. And my old nurse, Margaret, she still treats me like a baby. She's a good old woman, to be sure. But she oughtn't to be living here any longer. We don't need her. You should keep all these women under control, Lola, no? Uh, you give them too much freedom. My dear fellow, can you show me how to keep women in order? To tell you the truth, although she's my sister, your wife Laura's always been difficult to control. She has her faults, but she's not bad as bad as she might be. Come on now, Adolf. You don't know her. Well, she has rather romantic ideas, but she's my wife and... and because she's your wife, you think she's perfect. No, brother-in-law, Adolf, it's not you, but she that wears the trousers in this house. The whole household's gone mad. Laura's determined that Bertha is going to stay here, but I won't allow her to stay in this lunatic asylum. She's decided, has she? Then there's sure to be trouble, I'm afraid. Laura always tries to get her own way. Yes, she's over-emotional at times. Can't you make some sort of uh, compromise? What's your plan for Bertha? Well, I don't want her to be a mere housewife. I want her to be a teacher. Then she'll be able to support herself if she doesn't get married. And if she does get married, she'll be able to educate her own children. And that's reasonable, isn't it? Uh, reasonable, yes. But what about her artistic talent? You shouldn't try to reflect that. A famous painter I know told me that her talent is just average. But then some stupid young would-be artist told my wife that Bertha was a genius. And was this stupid young artist in love with Bertha? Naturally. God help you, old boy. There's no way out. I suppose all the women in the house are on Lola's side. Yes, of course. The whole household is like a madhouse. I know what it's like. You too? Yes, I have trouble with the women in my house too. The horrible thing about this is that their opinions are not based on what's best for Bertha. They are based on their hatred for me. It's woman against man all day long. Uh, uh, do you have to go? Uh, won't you stay for supper? There's a new doctor coming. Have you seen him yet? I saw him briefly on my way here. He looks like a uh, nice, reliable man. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, do you think he'll be on my side in this battle I'm fighting here at home? Maybe. It depends on how well he understands women. Uh, but won't you stay? Oh, thank you, my dear fellow. But I promise to be home for supper. My wife gets anxious if I'm out late. Anxious? You mean angry, don't you? <laughs> well, please yourself. And let me help you on with your coat. It's certainly very cold tonight. Thank you. Perhaps. You must uh, look after yourself, Adolf. You seem a bit nervous. Uh, nervous? 
And I seem nervous. Yes. You are not very well, are you? Is that what Laura said to you? For the last 20 years, she has been treating me as if I had one foot in my grave. Oh, no, Laura didn't say anything to me about you. It's just that I'm, I'm worried about you. Take my advice and take care of yourself. Goodbye, old man. Uh, by the way, I didn't you want to talk about your daughter's confirmation? No, there's no point. We'll just have to see what happens. I must get on with my accounts now. And goodbye. Remember me to your wife. Goodbye, Adolf. I give my love to Laura. in the least. You want the housekeeping money, I suppose? Yes, the housekeeping money. If you'll give me the receipts, I'll go through them later. Receipts? Yes. Do you expect me to bother about receipts now? Of course. You must keep proper accounts and give me the receipts. Our financial situation is extremely serious. We might go bankrupt. It's not my fault if we are in debt. The receipts will show you are to blame. If we are in debt, it's not my fault. Our tenant farmer doesn't pay his rent. Hey, it was you who raised up for Scatterbrain to rent her farmland. Why did you allow such a Scatterbrain to take over the farm? Because all you women in this house nagged at me to do so until I accepted him. You wanted him because your priest brother recommended him. Your mother wanted him because I didn't. And old Margaret wanted him because she had known his grandmother as a child. And the kitchen girls wanted him because he was good looking. If I hadn't given in to all that pressure, I'd be in a lunatic asylum by now. Oh, in the family grave. However, here's the housekeeping money. And your pocket money. You can give me the receipts later. Thank you so much. By the way, do you keep your own receipts of what you spend outside the house? That's none of your business. I see. None of my business. And the future of my daughter is none of my business. Did you and that judgment brother of mine decide anything this evening? I had already decided about Bertha. I merely wanted to tell him about it. He's the only friend I've got in this family. Bertha is going away to live in town. Where, may I ask, is she going to stay? At the house of Sutberg, the lawyer. He doesn't believe in God. He's an atheist. According to the law, it is the father who decides about the religion of his children. And the mother has no say in the matter? None whatever. When she marries, she gives up all her rights to her husband. So in return, her husband supports her and her children. The mother has no... no rights over her child? None at all! But suppose the father and the mother decide things together? Impossible in our case. I want Bertha to live in town. You want her to stay at home. It's a deadlock. Then we'll have to force the issue. What was Noah doing here? Ah, uh, that's a professional 
secret. Everybody in the kitchen knows about it. Then no doubt you know about it too. I do. What do you think about it? I leave it for the law to decide. The law doesn't say who the father of the child is. Well, people know that by themselves. People say it's not possible to prove anything. How extraordinary. You mean it's impossible to tell who the father is? Apparently not. Amazing. Then how can the father have those rights over the mother's child? Oh, he has those rights when he takes responsibility for the child. Uh, but of course, in marriage, there is no doubt about who the father is. No doubt? No doubt. But supposing the wife has been unfaithful? Oh, that wouldn't be relevant in our case. Is there anything else you want to ask me about? No, nothing. Then I'll go up to my room. Please let me know when the doctor comes. I will. Tell me immediately he comes, do you understand? I don't want to be rude to him on his first visit. I understand. Disturbed in 
other ways. Yes, that's what we fear. You see? Sometimes he has the most strange ideas. For example, he has an absolute mania for buying things. That's significant. Uh, what kind of things does he like buying? Books. Boxes of boxes of them, and he never reads them. Oh, it's not so strange for a scholar like your husband to buy many books. So you don't believe me? On the contrary, I believe every word you have spoken. Well, tell me then. Is it possible for anyone to see in a microscope what is happening on another planet? Does he say he can do that? Yes, that's what he said. See a planet through a microscope. Are you sure he didn't say telescope? No, microscope. <laughs> That's significant. Yes. If it is true. So you don't believe me, Doctor, do you? And I've told you the family secret. Oh, my dear lady. to make a careful examination of the fact before I can express an opinion. Has the captain showed any symptoms of instability, any lack of willpower? Oh, so often. We've been married 20 years and he's never once made a decision without changing his mind afterwards. This requires a careful consideration. Willpower, madam, is the backbone of the mind. If the will is injured, the mind falls to pieces. You can't imagine what a difficult time I've had, Doctor, during all these long, hard years. I'm deeply distressed, Madam, to hear of your trouble. I promise you I will do what I can. Please rely on me completely. I'm going to ask you to do one thing. Don't let your husband worry about anything. Sometimes, certain forms of worry can turn into a fixation, an obsession, and he cannot think anything at all. Do you follow me? You mean, don't let him get any fixed ideas into his head? Precisely. A man like that can easily be led astray with false ideas. I see. I understand. Yes, indeed. Laura! Where's that deal? Excuse me, that's my mother. I won't be a moment. Oh, yes, I know. Ah, so you've arrived, Doctor. Uh, you're very welcome. How do you do, Captain? Uh, it is a great honor to meet such a distinguished scientist. Oh, please. <laughs> Unfortunately, my army duties don't give me much time for scientific research. All the same, I do believe I'm now on the brink of a rather exciting discovery. Really? You know, for, uh, I've been examining meteoric stones, and I find that they contain carbon. Carbon, as you know, is a sign of organic life. What do you say to that? Can you see that uh, in a microscope? No, in a spectroscope, for heaven's sake. Spectroscope. I, I, I beg your pardon. Then you will soon be telling us what is happening on the planet Jupiter. Uh, not what is happening, what has happened. Oh, if only I could get the books I ordered for two months. I have not had one single answer to any of my letters or telegrams to the bookshops in Paris. It's driving me mad. I can't understand it. Perhaps the booksellers are a little careless. I would not let it worry you. If I can't get my books, I can't finish my paper in time. There's another fellow in Berlin working on the same idea. And I want to be the first to publish. But let's talk about you. 
Would you take, would you like to take rooms in this house, or would you prefer to live in the house near here where the previous doctor was? Oh, whichever you please. No, whichever you please, you choose. Uh, I, I really don't care one way or the other. Oh, for Christ's sake, man! Say what you want! I think I would <laughs> rather stay in this house. Good. <laughs> I've almost lost my temper. I can't bear people who say they don't care one way or another. Oh, it's you, Margaret. Uh, are the rooms ready for the doctor? Oh, yes, Captain. Everything is ready. Uh, good. Then perhaps you'd like to retire, Doctor. Uh, good night. And once again, welcome. I look forward to seeing you in the morning. Thank you, Captain. Oh, by the way, I wonder if my wife said anything to you about herself and me. Uh, did she tell you about the um, situation here? Your good lady did say a thing or two. Useful for a newcomer like me to know. Good night, Captain. <coughs> oh, what's the matter? Uh, no, it's Mr. Adderoff, dear. Oh, well, go on talking, Margaret. Uh, you are the only one who's talking <laughs> doesn't get on my nerves. There is Mr. Adderoff. Couldn't you try to reach some compromise with your wife about all this trouble with your daughter? Think of a mother. Oh, think of a father, Margaret. No, no, no. A father has many things beside his child. But a mother has nothing but her child. Uh, quite, sir. She has only one burden to bear. But I have three. My own troubles, Bertha's troubles, and her troubles, too. Do you think I'd have stayed in the army if I didn't have a wife and a child to support? I know, but that wasn't what I wanted to talk about. Quite so. What you want to say is, I'm in the wrong. Uh, I want, but best for you, Miss Dado. I'm sure you do, my dear. Uh, but you don't know what's best for me. It's not enough for me to have given the child life. I want to give her my very soul. Well, well. But I think you and your wife ought to agree. Margaret, you are not my friend. Not <laughs> your friend? Oh, dear God. Do you think I can ever forget you were my baby when you were little? I can never forget it. You are like a mother to me. But now you are deserting me. Going over to the enemy. <laughs> enemy? Yes, enemy. You know perfectly well how things are between me and my wife. Yes, my dear. And I can't understand why two such good and kind people should hate each other so much. Your wife is never unpleasant to me. Uh, only to me. I know. But if you desert me now, you'll be doing a wicked thing. Left it closing around me. And that new doctor is no friend of mine. Why do you think the worst of everyone? Because you don't believe in God. That's why. Whereas you and your Baptist friends have found a true faith, eh? You're lucky. Luckier than you, Mr. Adolf. Have your heart. God will make you happy. Isn't it strange? As soon as you talk about God, your voice grows cold and hard, and your eyes fill with hate. Oh, shame on you. Still, old Margaret still loves her great big boy, Mr. Wall. Forgive me, Margaret. 
You're the only friend I have here. <laughs> oh, what's that? Who screams? Father! Oh, what's the matter, darling? Tell me. Please help me. I know she'll do something terrible to me. Uh, who? What do you mean? Grandmother. But it was my fault. I played a trick on her. Promise you won't tell anyone. Uh, very well. Uh, go on. You see, sometimes in the evening, she turns the lamp down and makes me sit at the table holding a pen over a piece of paper. And then she says the spirits will write words on the paper. Uh, why didn't she tell me about this before? I'm sorry, I didn't dare. Grandmother says the spirits will get their revenge on people who talk about them. Anyway, sometimes the pen I'm holding seems to write words on the paper. But sometimes nothing happens. Then I get tired and make up the words myself. That's what I did tonight. Suddenly, Grandmother understood what I was doing, and she got terribly angry. Uh, do you believe in these spirits of your grandmothers? I don't know. Oh, well, I know. It's all nonsense. Grandmother says you don't understand. She says, you have evil powers and can see things on other planets. Oh, is that what she says? Uh, you know what uh, meteorites are, don't you? Uh, the stones fall down to Earth from outer space. Well, I examined these stones and learned about their chemical properties. It's not evil at all. Grandmother says she can see things which you can't. Uh, she's telling lies, my dear. Grandmother doesn't tell lies. How do you know? If grandmother tells lies, then mother does too. But if you say mother is a liar, I'll never believe anything you say again. And listen, Bertha. Your happiness, your whole future depends on your living home. Uh, wouldn't you like to go and live in town <coughs> and uh, learn something useful? Oh, yes. I'd love to live in town. Anyway, away from here, it's always so miserable here, as gloomy as the winter's night. But when you are at home, father, it's like a spring morning. Oh, my darling, my dearest child. But father, listen, you must be kind to mother. She often cries. Uh, so, you'd like to live in town? Oh, yes! Uh, but supposing your mother doesn't agree? She must! Uh, but supposing she doesn't? <coughs> then I don't know what will happen, but she must! She must! Uh, will you ask her? No, you must ask her. <laughs> Very nicely. She never listens to me. Mm, she still may not agree. What shall we do then? Then you are sad crying again. So you are here, Bertha. Well, now I know. Her future has to be decided. Let's hear what she has to say herself. The child can't possibly know what's best for her. You and I must decide. But as we don't agree, Bertha herself will have to decide. No, I, no, I, I don't allow anyone to interfere with my rights. Neither woman or child. Bertha? Uh, you'd better leave the room. You are afraid to hear her opinion because you know she'll agree with me. I know she wants to leave home. But I also know that uh, you have the power to make her change her mind. Oh? Do I have so much power? Yes, you have the devil's power of getting your own way, always. That's how you got rid of Dr. Norling. That's how you got this new doctor, Ostmark. Dr. Norling was too old. Ostmark? Oh, well, anyway. Is Bertha going to leave home? Yes, in two weeks' time. I warn you. I shall do my best to prevent it. You can't! Can't I? Do you expect me to give up my child to be taught by evil people who will say everything she has learned from me is nonsense? She
she will hate me for the rest of my life. Uh, do you expect me to allow ignorant and dogmatic women to teach my daughter that her father is a fool? That wouldn't matter much to you. Not now. Uh, what on earth do you mean? Well, since it has been discovered that no one could ever tell who the child's father is. What's that got to do with us? You don't know if you were Bertha's father. Don't know? <laughs> How can you know what nobody knows? Are you joking? No, I'm simply applying your own theory. <laughs> How do you know I haven't been unfaithful to you? I can believe many bad things about you, but not that. Ah, but supposing I'm telling the truth now when I say, Bertha is my child, but not yours. I'm supposing... Uh, stop it! Just supposing. <coughs> if that were true, you would no power over her at all. I'd have my power until you proved I wasn't a father. That wouldn't be difficult. Do you want me to... Uh, stop! women treat a fully grown man as if he were a baby. Oh, well, goodness me. You are all the children of women, aren't you? All you men, big or small. A man is born of a woman. Uh, but a woman is not born of man. Is that what you mean? True. But I must be Bertha's father. You believe that, don't you, Margaret? Don't you? Don't you? Lord, what a silly boy you are. Of course you are own child father. Come along, eat now. Don't sit here sulking. There now. Come along. Uh, get out, woman! To hell with all you have! to get the horse and the sledge ready. The horse and sledge? At this time of night, sir. Ah, silence, you slut! Now, listen, Captain. Get out, woman! Get out, I say! Oh, God preserve us. Whatever is going to happen now, Not a word more. Don't expect me home until midnight.
conversation with your husband has led me to the conclusion that your suspicions are by no means proved. To begin with, you were mistaken in thinking that he had made his important scientific dis discoveries by using a microscope. What he used was a spectroscope, not only is there no sign of mental derangement. On the contrary, he has rendered a great service to science. But I never said microscope. I made a note of our conversation, madam, and I remember asking you about this vital point. One must be absolutely accurate when bringing charges which might lead to a man being certified. Certified? I imagine you are aware that if a person is certified insane, he loses all his social and family rights. No, I didn't know that. There is one other point I would like you to be clear about. He told me about not getting any replies from his booksellers. May I ask you, have you been intercepting his letters? Yes, I have. It's my duty to protect the family. I couldn't let him ruin us all and do nothing about it. Excuse me for saying so, but if he realizes that you have been interfering his affairs with behind his back, he might develop a persecution mania. You must know how frustrating it is to have your dearest wishes thwarted. Indeed, I do. Then, think how important this book business is for him. It's midnight, and he hasn't come back yet. Tell me, what happened this evening after I saw him? I must know everything. He talked in the wildest way and said the most fantastic ideas. Can you believe it? He even suggested that he wasn't the father of his own child. How extraordinary. What can have made him think that? I really can't imagine, unless it was an interview he had this evening with one of his men about some affair the man had had with one of our kitchen mates. She was uh, pregnant. My husband got very excited and said, no one could ever tell who a child's father was. I did my best to calm him down, but I don't think I can save him now. Something must be done without making him suspicious. Uh, where do you think he is now? Haven't the faintest idea. He's so wild these days. Uh, would you like me to stay down here till he comes back? I could say I'm here because, uh, well, uh, because your mother is ill, and I came down here to see her. That's a very good idea. Please stand by us, doctor. If only you knew how worried I am. But wouldn't it be better to tell him directly what you think about his condition. Uh, we never do that with mental patients unless they mention the subject themselves. Everything depends on how the case develops from now. Uh, we had better not stay in here. Uh, may I go into some other room, near your mother's room, for example? Yes, that would be better. And Margaret, the nurse, you know, she can stay in here. She always waits up for him when he's late. Margaret! Margaret! She's the only person who can manage him. Did you call, madame? It must uh, work. Not yet, but you want to wait here for him. And tell him, my mother is unwell, and the doctor is with her. Yes, I understand. Leave it to me, madam. Would you come this way, doctor? Thank you.
Still up. Go to bed. Oh, I was only waiting until meet the other. Uh, what's the matter? The old lady, your wife's mother, is not well. Doctor is here. Uh, anything serious? No, I don't think so. Just that. Uh, Oh, uh, Margaret, who was the father of your child? Oh, I told you often enough. It was that good for nothing fellow, Johansson. Are you sure he was the father? Oh, don't be so silly. Of course I'm sure. Seeing he was the one. I know. He was the only one. That's, but that's your opinion. He couldn't be sure. Only you could be, see? That's the difference. I don't see any difference. No, you don't see it. But it's there all the same. Do you think Bertha oh. looks like me? Yes. You are as like as Peas in the pond. Did Johansson admit he was the father? Well, he was forced to. <laughs> That's horrible. Here's the doctor. Uh, good evening, doctor. How is my mother in law? Oh, it's nothing much. Just a strain of the left oh. ankle. What? <laughs> I thought Margaret said it was a chill. There appear to be some rather different opinions. Margaret, go to bed. Won't you sit down, Doctor? 
Off the mark. Thank you. Tell me, Doctor, is it true that if a female horse mates with a male zebra, the offspring will be little horses with stripes? <laughs> <laughs> and that if the breeding is continued another generation, that is, one of these um, striped horses were to mate with an ordinary horse, then the offspring is, might still have stripes. That is also true. So, in certain circumstances, a male horse can be the father of striped horses. That would appear to be the case. Mm, so, even if the offspring looked like the father, it would prove nothing. Or, oh, well... Your wife is no longer alive, I believe. Uh, did you have any children? Yes. Didn't you sometimes feel rather ridiculous as a father? It sounds so stupid to say, uh, this is my child. <laughs> we ought to say, this is my wife's child. <laughs> Didn't you ever have any doubts about your wife? No, never. We have to take our children on trust. Trust? <laughs> it's impossible to trust a woman. Ah. Uh. There are many kinds of women. The latest research finds that there is only <laughs> one kind. When I was younger, I had two experiences with women which make me think. The first was like this. A young lady on the ship tearfully told me how her lover had been drowned at sea. I sympathized with her and gave her some Champagne. After the second glass, I touched her foot. After the fourth, I put my hand on her knee. Uh, by the next morning, I was her lover. Quick work! <laughs> <laughs> but not all women <coughs> are like that. My second experience was as follows. I once met a woman with three children. Her husband was away in town. She was religious, high-minded, very moralistic, and was, so I thought, extremely virtuous. One day, I lent her a book, which a day or two later she returned to. A few months later, I opened that uh, book again, and inside I found a uh, Love letter from her to me. <laughs> to a stranger who never gave the slightest sign of affection for her. You see, it's impossible to trust a woman. Uh, you are thinking too deeply about this, Captain. Not at all. A steam engine will explode if the pressure gets too great. But I am a man, Doctor. I must fold my arms and hold my breath till I die. You are here. Observe me, aren't you? Not because of my mother-in-law. Good night. If you are ill, Captain, there is no shame in telling me about it. Uh, good night, Doctor. S look how calm I am. It's quite for it's quite safe for you to go to bed. Well, then I'll bid you good night. But if you want to tell me anything about your condition, I can do nothing. So we are. Enemies? By no means. It's just a pity that we can't be friends. Good night. Come in and let's talk. I knew you were listening to us out there. It's rather late, but we'd better get this business finished now. Sit down. This evening, I went to the post office myself and fetched the mail. From my letters, it is clear that you have been interfering with my correspondence, both incoming and outgoing. As a result, I'm very much behind with my research. I did it with the best of intentions. 
Your scientific studies were causing you to neglect your military duty. Not with the best of intentions at all! You wanted to slow down my scientific work because you were jealous of my success. Because it made you feel inferior. Now, for a change, I've opened some letters addressed to you. How noble of you! From these letters. It appears that you have been setting my old friends against me by spreading rumors about my mental condition. As a result, almost everyone I know thinks I am half insane. The truth is this. My mind is in no way affected, and I am able to fulfill all my duties as an army captain and as a father. <laughs> my emotions are still well under control, but you, like a rat, have been gnawing and gnawing at my willpower, so that one of these days something will snap and I'll go to pieces. Go on. You have filled me so full of suspicion about yourself that my mind is beginning to get confused. This means that the insanity you have been waiting for is on its way and may come at any moment suddenly. Now, think carefully. If I have a mental breakdown, I'll have to leave the army. And what will happen to you then? If I die, you'll get my life insurance, of course. But if I kill myself, you'll get nothing. It's better for you if I remain alive. Is this a trap? Yes, <laughs> it's a trap. You can avoid it, or you can stick your head in it. You'd never have the courage to kill yourself. How are you so sure? Do you think a man can go on living when he has nothing and nobody to live for? Then, you surrender? No. I offer peace. On what terms? That I may keep my reason. Free me from doubt. And I stop. Doubt about what? About Bertha. Bertha's real father. Are there any doubts about that? Yes. For me, Vera. It was you who aroused them. I? Yes. You have dropped them like poison in my ear. Now, free me from these doubts. Tell me about Bertha's real father, and I will forgive you. How can I admit that I'm guilty if I'm not guilty? I would never tell anyone about it. I'd be too ashamed. If I say you are the father of Bertha, you still won't be certain. But if I say you are not the father, you believe me. You want it to be true that I've had an affair with one man. Yes. Strangely enough, I do want it to be true. You want it to be true? so that you can get rid of me and gain absolute control over Bertha. You won't catch me in a trap like that. If I knew you were guilty, do you think I would want to bring up another man's child? No, I'm sure you wouldn't want to. That means you were lying when you said you would forgive me. Laura, save me and my race. Try to understand. If the child is not mine, I have no rights over her, nor do I want any. But what you really want is complete power over Bertha and me to support you both, isn't it? Yes. Power. That's it. The whole of this life and this struggle of ours is for power. I don't believe in life after death. Bertha was the only way I could live in the future. If you take her away from her, you cut off my very life. Who is the father? You are. No, I am not! <laughs> There is a 
horrible crime here, Laura. You treat me like a slave. Yes, I have slaves for you. Your child, your mother, your servant. My hair has gone gray with the efforts I have made and with the way you have tortured me. Oh, I have suffered all this to give you a carefree life and let you enjoy a happy future in your child. Yet now, you have stolen her from me. For 17 years, I've been suffering like this. And I am innocent. No! Wow, no, you were really mad! So, you hope! What can I do? Shall I swear before God that you are murdered, Father? Who wants to go to that? No! I implore you to tell me the truth. Put me out of my misery. Can't you, can't you see that I'm as helpless as a child? Can't you hear me crying to my mother that I am hurt? Forget that I'm a man, a soldier. I'm nothing but a sick creature in need of pity. I give up all my power, Laura. I only beg you to have mercy on my life. What are you? A man in tears? Yes, a man in tears. <laughs> but why should a man suffer in silence or a soldier hide his tears? Because it isn't manly. Why isn't it manly? Weep then, my child, and you shall have your mother again. Remember. I was your second mother that I came into your life. You were big and strong, and yet not fully a man. You were like a giant child who had come into the world too soon. Or perhaps you were an unwanted child. That's true. My wife, my mother and father had no will to have any children, and so I was born without any will of my own. That was why, when you and I became one, I felt I was completing myself. And that is why you have been always stronger than me. I grew up at your side. I looked up to you as a superior being, and I listened to you as if I were your foolish little boy. Yes, that's how it was. And I loved you as if you were my little boy. But didn't you see how, when your feelings changed and you came to me as a lover, I was ashamed? I felt so guilty. The mother had become the wife. Horrible! I saw, but I didn't understand. I thought you hated me because I wasn't manly. So I tried to win you as a woman by proving myself as a man. That was your mistake. The mother was your friend, you see, and the woman was your enemy. Sexual love is nothing but conflict. I didn't give myself to you, Adolf. I only took what I wanted. You have held power all, all, over me always. You have forced, forced me to be you always by a kind of you could give me a raw potato and make me think it was a peach. You have corrupted me, and now I've finally lost my integrity. I wanted to wipe out my shame by doing something heroic. I wanted to be a courageous soldier, but there were no wars to fight in. I took up my scientific research, but you spoiled that too. And now, now when
then I should be stretching out my hand to gather the fruit you chop off my arm. You have robbed me of my triumph. I am finished. A man cannot live without dignity and fame. No, can a woman. No! A woman has her children. Fancies and ideals and illusions until we woke up. And we were woken up by somebody talking in his own sleep. <laughs> when women grow old and stop being women, they grow beards on their cheeks. What happens to men when they grow old and stop being men? In the dawn, we woke up. The cocks and hens are all sexless. And when the sun should have risen to us, we found ourselves back among the ruins in the moonlight, just as in the good old times. But it was all dreams. We hadn't woken up at all. You know, you should have been a writer, a poet. Perhaps. But I'm sleepy now, so if you have any more fantasies, keep them for tomorrow. Just one more thing. Do you hate me? Sometimes as a man. In the struggle of these hours, one of us must go under. Which, you or me? Naturally, the weaker. Then, in the stronger is the right? The stronger has the power and must be right. Then, I am in the right. Why? What power do you have? All I need. And it will be legal power tomorrow, when I have you. Certified. Certified? You mean certified as insane? Yes. Then I shall decide Bertha's future by myself without having to worry about Who your... will pay for hand for you if I'm not there? Your army pension. But how can you have me certified? By means of this letter. <coughs> this is the letter you wrote to the former doctor saying that you are going mad. What letter? Your own letter. This is a letter you wrote to the former doctor that's saying that you are going mad. Now, you have fulfilled the unfortunately necessary functions of being a father and the source of our income. You were no longer needed. And you must go. You must go! Now that you realize that my mind is strong as my willpower, you won't want to stay here to acknowledge my absolute power over you. <laughs>
us. So no one's on duty tonight, is he? He is not in the house today. Keep him out of the kitchen. Give me the keys. Uh, here you are. I didn't like stealing them from the captain. Oh, listen to him walking up and down, up and down. My dear Ola, I've been out all day and have only just got back. I hear you've been having a terrible time. Yes, brother. I have never been able to look. I have never been through such a night and day in all my life. Well, I'm glad to see you are not looking too bad. No, thank heaven. I wasn't injured. Of what might have happened. Tell me all about it. I've already heard rumors. How did it begin? It began by him raving about not being Bertha's father and ended by him throwing the lighted lamp in my face. But this is too shocking for words. He must be out of his mind. Throwing a lighted lamp at someone is a well known symptom of madness. What in heaven's name are we to do about it? We must try to prevent further violence. The doctor has sent to the hospital for. Straight jacket. And I've just written a note to the commanding officer. And now. I'm trying to sort out all these papers. Adolf has let our financial affairs get you into a terrible mess. Well, it's a miserable business. But I fear something like this would happen when fire and water meet. There's bound to be an explosion. Whatever about this. This is where he's kept everything Good hidden. Heavens. He has your whole door. And Bassa's baby's rattle. And your letters. And that locket. 
and with a piece of your hair in it. She must have loved you very dearly, Laura. I've never kept this kind of thing. I believe he did love me once, but time changes everything. What's this impressive looking document? This is a receipt for the purchase of a grave. Well, better a grave than a lunatic asylum. Laura, be frank with me. Aren't you to blame for all this trouble? How can I be to blame if someone goes out of his mind? Well, I'll say no more. But you can't deny that you'd very much like to have to complete control of your daughter. I don't understand. <laughs> How strong-willed you are, Laura. How amazingly strong will You are like a fox in a trap that will blow off its own leg rather than be caught. Look in the mirror. You daren't. I never use a mirror. No, you daren't look at yourself. Let me see your hand. Not a single drop of blood. Not a sign of a secret poison. A little innocent. Murder that the law cannot touch. An unconscious crime. Uh, you're a genius. Listen to him up there. Take care, Laura. If that man gets free, he will sow you in pieces. Ugh. You must have a guilty conscience to talk like that. Put the blame on me if you can. I can't. You see? You can't. And so I am innocent. You take care of the captain, and I'll take care of Bertha. Ah, oh, here's the doctor. I'm glad to see you, doctor. I know I can count you on your help, although there's not much you can do now. You hear him up there? Are you convinced at last that he is insane? I am convinced that there has been an act of violence. But the question is, should that act of violence be regarded as an outbreak of anger or insanity? But apart from this actual outbreak, you must admit that she suffers from fixed ideas. I have an idea that your ideas are even more fixed. My strong belief in the Lord Almighty. Never mind about the Lord Almighty. It is up to you, madam, whether your husband should be sent to prison or to the asylum. I what is the opinion of his behavior? I can't answer that now. Huh? Have you no uh, strong beliefs about what should be best for your family? There's bound to be a Scandal! Whatever happens! If we were sent to prison, he would soon be let out, and th then he would, might become violent again! So, it seems best for all concerned that he should be treated as insane. Where's the nurse? Why do you want the nurse? Well, she must put the straitjacket on the captain, not immediately until... I want to talk to him first, and not until I give the order. I have the... the straitjacket outside.
unusually long sleeves, and these sleeves are to prevent, these sleeves are to uh, control his arm movement. These straps to be tied together, his behind, uh, to get together his, behind his back. You must fasten to the chair. Can you do this? No. Do you think? No, I can't. No, not that. Why not do it yourself, doctor? Because the patient doesn't trust me. You, madam, are the proper person, but I'm afraid he doesn't trust you either. Perhaps you. I, I, I'm afraid I must refuse. My note? Yes, ma'am. And I haven't been in the kick too, Lord. <laughs> you understand the problem here, don't you? The captain has had a mental breakdown. You must help us look after the patient. If there's anything I can do for the captain, he knows that I could do it. You have to put the jacket on him. No! No, he's not to touch him. I won't allow not to hurt the captain. I'd rather do it myself. Gentry. Gentry. But not can wait outside and help me if need be. Yes. That's what he'd better do. There he is! The Lord! Come! Under your show. Now, go away, all of you, while you and I have a talk with him. The door don't hold too long. Hurry! Lord, save us! Help us! And when he's saved, 
saved indeed. <laughs> no one can be damned if you believe. That's what I've learned. But, Captain... Silence! I don't want any chat or gossip from you. Listen to me, Jonas. Do you imagine you are the father of your children? I used to remember that you had a handsome young teacher living in your house, and the people used to gossip about him and your wife. Take care, Adolf. What? Are you turning pale? It was only talk, of course, just gossip. But we married men always figure as funds. Everybody laughs at us. Isn't that right, Doctor? What about your own marriage bed? Didn't you have a certain young army officer living in your house, eh? Uh, let me see his name was... <laughs> By job, he turned pale too. But don't worry, your wife is dead and buried. So what happened can't be repeated. <laughs> I am mad! But why did I become mad? Doesn't that interest you? No, it doesn't interest anyone! Here's my daughter! Mine! But what does it matter? What does anything matter now when I have nothing left? I'm just a tree with half its branches cut off. I am dying. Let me die. Do what you like with me. I am finished. You see? And I'm going to eat you. 
Your mother wanted to eat me, but she didn't succeed. I am Satan who devoured his children because it was foretold that otherwise they would eat him. If I don't eat you, you will eat me. You've shown your teeth already. <laughs> Don't be afraid, my darling. I won't hurt you. King Margaret, it soothes my mind. Go on talking. Yes, Miss Tudor, I do. But listen carefully. Do you remember how you was to cook great big kitchen right? to come about me? And I came in. give you a golden coat and dress you just like a prince. Then I took your little tunic made of green oil. You remember? And I held it up in front of you and said,
to bed. What's that? Go to bed just when I got dressed. to be born because my birth would give her pain. She was my enemy. My sister was my enemy when she fooled me. The first woman I took, took into my arms was my enemy. She gave me ten years of filthy disease in return for the love I gave her. And when my daughter had to choose between you and me, she became my enemy. And you, you, my wife, have been my mortal enemy, for you have not let go your hold until there is no life left in me. But I didn't mean this happened like this. I never really made any plans. I may have had some vague idea to get rid of you, but I was unconscious of it. My conscience is clear, and before God, I feel innocent even if I'm not. You weighed me down like a stone, pressing and pressing till my heart tried to shake up the intolerable burden. That's how it's been. And if without meaning to I have brought you to this condition, I ask you to forgive me. Oh, that all sounds very reasonable. But how does it help me? And whose fault is it? <laughs> Your suspicions about our daughter are entirely mistaken. That's the horror of it. One can be mistaken. And now, there are 
only shadows lurking in the forest, peering out to his death, grinning faces. And my thoughts, they dissolve in mist. And my brain grinds against rocks until it catches fire. Puts a pillow under my head. Lay something over me, I'm cold. I'm terribly cold. Well, give me your hand, my dear. My hand, which you have bound behind my back, Delilah. against my mouth. It's warm and gentle like your arms and smells like your hair when you are young. When you are young, Laura, and we used to walk in the pine forest. There are primroses and thrushes. Lovely. Lovely. Think how beautiful life was then, and what it has become now. You didn't want it to become like this, neither did I. Yet it has. Who rules our lives then? God! The God of battles then? Oh, not God. God is! Take away his cap that's lying on me. Bring my uniform. Put my tunic over. Delilah! Delilah! Are you cunning woman lover of peace? Wake Samson before they cut your hair and take away your strength. In the old days, soldier's tunic was made by an ironsmith. Now it's sewn by a woman, Delilah. Powerful strength has been defeated by treacherous meekness. Shame on you, woman of Satan, and a curse on all your sex. What sort of pillow have you given the matter? How hard and cold it is. So cold. Come and sit beside me on this chair. Yes, like that. Let me put my head on your lap. Ah, it's warmer. Lean over me so I can feel your breath. How sweet it is to sleep upon a woman's breast, be she mother or wife. But sweetest of all is a mother's breast. Adam, tell me. My child, a man has no children. Only women have their children. So the future is theirs. Why do we men die childless? Oh, God, who 
calls all children here. Listen, it prayed to God. No, to you to put me to sleep. It's all to die among women. With his last breath, he prayed to God. It is too. It is. 